I want to take a look at some uh, stocks that are actually trending on the Yahoo Finance site today. And for that, let's bring in Jared Blickery. Jared, let's start with Tesla jumping to a six month high today. They've got some good news coming out of China. Tell us about it. That's right. And it gets back to those deliveries. They already beat on you. Uh, beat expectations on U.S. deliveries, which we got towards the beginning of the month. But in China, they sold, or actually, yeah, they sold 56,006 China-made cars. That's up 26.5% month over month. And also, we're looking at a figure. They exported 3,853 vehicles, a lot of those destined for Europe. And we know that they're getting their Germany Gigafactory uh, up to snuff as well. So that's going to be less of an issue for Europeans trying to get their hands on a Tesla. But let's check out the technicals on the Wi-Fi Interactive. And uh, Tesla has now cleared. It's been holding above $800 a share for a few sessions now. I want to check in on the year-to-date view because we can see this is a stock that bottomed in March, uh, tested those lows in May, and has been on a very incremental uh, incline ever since. We can see this trend channel in play here. Uh, so at the $800 price level, we're running into some resistance from those prior highs. The absolute high was $900 per share, but uh, so close to the finish line, we might actually back off a little bit and consolidate, but I don't see any reason why we wouldn't at least test those record highs of $900 per share. So good news for those Tesla holder, holders who uh, went through a pretty nasty correction. I believe this, this was something like 40% or 45% from high to low this year. Uh, so Tesla volatility in the stock has been trending down, and that's also bullish for this particular issue. Although it would be nice to see a surge, as we've seen uh, in prior episodes, and I'll go back, uh, put on a two-year chart, you can see when the stock gets going, it really gets going, but probably have to wait for it to break to new highs first, Alexis. That's a pretty nice looking chart there, Jared. Not looking too nice today uh, is Micron. Uh, that stock is, uh, I guess, at its lowest level in a couple of months. I know there are concerns about chip prices, but I'm wondering if that is bleeding into the entire computer chip sector, or is this just a Micron story? I think when it comes to Micron, and they're specifically levered to the uh, memory space, and that's very, very cyclical. It's a little, it operates a little bit differently than the GPU and uh, some of the other sectors, the server space, the cloud chips, all that good stuff. Um, with respect to Micron itself, so despite the fact that we've seen uh, most of the weakness in Micron today, I would say the semiconductor space has been flagging as of late. Uh, let me just read to you a quick excerpt from this report. It's from Trend, uh, Trendforce. They're saying uh, contract prices for the memory chips are poised to decline in the, in the fourth quarter, citing falling demand and a drop in spot prices. Also seeing Western Digital, one of its peers, drop 3.5%. But I want to get to a chart on the Wi-Fi Interactive here that shows the Philly Semiconductor Index over the last six months and it has fallen to a key technical level. This is the 200-day moving average. That's this purple line uh, right here. So we might bounce around, find some support. We can see that it's basically, this is the SOX index again. This has been uh, trading sideways for the last few months, and we might bounce off support here. But my point is, if we break to the downside through what's not only price action support, also 50-day moving or 200-day moving average support, probably going to get some momentum to the downside and test these levels from lower in May. In general, we've not seen not only uh, chip stocks, but also software to a lesser degree fall off. And that's because we've seen yields rise. You take a look at what the 10-year T-note yield has done recently. This uptrend doesn't bode well for the technology stocks. And that's what we've seen happen. Now, maybe a little bright spot, having hit about 1.6% very recently, having gotten a little bit overextended, could be due, could be due for a, a fall back to support here. So if that were the case, we would expect uh, chip stocks and some of the other growth stocks that have been flagging, those we would expect to rally. All right. And finally, Coinbase uh, has now become the latest crypto exchange to plan an NFT marketplace. I guess it was just a matter of time, Jared. Uh, yes, you knew that had to come sometime. Uh, but it, they're saying that the user experience of creating or purchasing an NFT has been, quote, lacking. Um, they're hoping to make things a little bit easier. They want people to work to create NFTs, what they call effortlessly, and control them through these decentralized contracts. There's going to be a social media function to it, too. So you know all of the, these things are going to come together. NFTs are still a fledgling market and also highly levered, I would say, to the price of Ethereum. 
But since we've seen this resurgence in the price, resurgence in the price of crypto, not only Bitcoin, but also Ethereum, we can see this on the Wi-Fi interactive over the last month, Bitcoin up 21%, Ethereum up a more modest 2.4%. Um, when we see these trends, when we see more interest in crypto, uh, we do tend to see a resurgence in EFTs. I'm gonna show a year-to-date year chart of Ethereum, and you can see um, after, after getting a nice run-up in August and early September, came back a little bit, but still, I would say the intermediate trend is still up, as is the long-term trend, Alexis.